It seems like in the fast-paced world we're living in, everyone is constantly trying to figure out different ways to become more efficient in their daily tasks and trying to figure out ways to get things done in a little bit quicker manner. That way we can create additional time on our day to add more tasks into our day, and then we'll try and get more efficient with those tasks so we can create more time in the day to add more tasks to our day, and it just really never ends. It gets me feeling like I'm on a hamster wheel sometimes, just constantly trying to figure out how much stuff can I cram into a 24 hour period? And once I figure that out, add more stuff and more stuff and more stuff to it. It's a good recipe to get burned out, I'll tell you that. But that is the topic of this week's video is to discuss nine single key shortcuts in Lightroom that I use constantly in my post-processing workflow. Now, the types of shortcuts that are not in this video are combination key shortcuts. So things like Control Shift Option 5 or Escape Caps Lock Option Command 6 or, or whatever the case may be, really for, for two main reasons. The first reason being, I think a single key, single key stroke shortcut is definitely gonna be a little bit more efficient than a four or five or multi-key shortcut. The second part is the fact that I really have a hard time remembering anything beyond a single key shortcut. These three, four, five different key shortcuts, I, the only way I would ever be able to use those is if I had to print off all these shortcuts and every time I wanted to use one, pull out this piece of paper and look at it and then hit the shortcut. And that completely defeats the entire purpose of using these types of efficiencies or these types of shortcuts. I think that they have to become second nature, almost robotic. You don't even wanna to have to think about using these shortcuts. And once you become so used to using them, that's when you really start to operate a little bit more efficiently by using these. And it actually makes it a little bit more fun to go through your, your post-processing workflow by using these. So I always focus on single key shortcuts. Now, these nine shortcuts, are not in any specific order. I like number one just as much as I like number nine. Now, there is a 10th one, kind of a bonus. It's not really a shortcut, it's not even a tip, it's, it's a setting. And it's something that I just discovered and I have no idea if it's brand new. It could be five years old, I've got no clue. But if you are OCD about organization like I am, you're absolutely gonna love this one. So to jump right into it, the very first one is the before and after view by using a shortcut key backslash. So if you're in the develop module and you just simply hit the backslash key, it's gonna to toggle on the before and after view. So this is the before view, straight out of camera, this is the raw file, and this is where the photo is right now edited. And if you wanna take it a step further, you can hit the shortcut key Y, and that's actually gonna split the view out for you so you can see the before and the after view at the very same time. And what's great about this is you can actually zoom into a specific segment of your photograph and see exactly what that region looks like before and after. And I find that's really good to see if, you know, maybe you've possibly oversaturated colors of a specific area, or maybe you've over sharpened a specific area or just over processed it in general. So being able to look at the before and after view right next to one another, I think is a huge benefit. And I use that one constantly. Now, the second shortcut is the, uh, the crop grid overlay with the shortcut key O. And if we come up here to the crop tool, and this is kind of the standard grid overlay that you see in Lightroom, but if you hit the shortcut key O, this gives you the ability to cycle through the different types of crop grid overlays that Lightroom provides. And this is really great just to try and kind of refine your composition a little bit. Maybe your composition is not working with the, the standard rule of thirds right here and you wanna get a little bit more creative with how you crop your photograph, it's a good practice to kind of just scroll through some of these different, different types of compositional techniques that uh, Lightroom provides, just to possibly get a, a little bit different type of uh, a take that could help you to kind of get a little bit more creative with exactly how you want to crop your photograph. Now, the third one has to do with the clipping indicator, which is gonna identify areas of uh, pure black or areas of pure white. So any area of your scene that you have clipped shadows or clipped highlights, if you hit the shortcut key J, it'll automatically identify those for you. So I'm in the develop module right here, and I'm gonna hit the shortcut key J, and anything that is highlighted in blue, it's gonna indicate clip shadows. Anything that is indicated in red is going to identify clipped highlights. So an easy way to resolve these, you can just go to the basic panel for these clip shadows down here. I can either just lift the shadows up a little bit, I can increase the blacks a little bit, 
and it's okay if there's a little bit of uh, clipped areas being uh, it cl clipped areas shown. It's not that big of a deal, but you definitely want to resolve uh, the majority of it. And then for the highlights up here, I can just simply bring down the highlights like this. You can bring down the exposure as well too, if you'd like. But using the uh, the shortcut key J just to toggle that on and off is is a good it's a good habit to get into just to see if there's any areas that you uh, need to solve for clipped highlights or clipped shadows. Now, the next one is the black and white shortcut key V. So V is in Victor. I don't do a lot of black and white photography, but I do like to check and see if a particular image might possibly look good in black and white if I don't like the way it looks like in color. And if you, use, if you just press the shortcut key V, it shows you real quick. So here's an image right here. I'm not super duper excited about exactly how it looks. It seems just a little boring to me. And if I wanna see exactly what it looks like, let me close this, in black and white, if I just hit the shortcut key V, that's gonna pull it up in the grayscale. And I can just toggle it on and off just by hitting V repeatedly to see exactly if I want to go that route or not. Now the next shortcut is the show mask overlay. This is another great one, the shortcut key O. So if I come up here to the adjustment brush, and I already have, you'll see I have a pin dropped right here. And if I select that, and I, I it's already highlighted right now, by, because I have the show mask, show selected mask overlay selected. If I deselect that and hit the shortcut key O, that's automatically gonna pull that up. So you don't actually have to come down here and click this tiny box to, sh to show the mask overlay. You can just hit the shortcut key O to show you. And another tip is if you hold down the shift key and hit O, you can actually change the color of that. You can change it from uh, green to white to black and I think default is red. I always just leave it on red, but just hitting the shortcut key O is a real quick way to show exactly what the, uh, the area being affected by whatever type of a adjustment you've applied to your photograph. Now this next one has to do with um, the survey mode, which is a shortcut key N. Now, if you're anything like me and you're on location, you, I always end up taking a ton of different versions of the same scene. A lot of times I'm trying to get the perfect light or trying to time the peak color in the sunrise or sunset, or I'm experimenting with different shutter speeds to try and get the, the perfect amount of texture in the water. But I'm ultimately left with a ton of different images that look identical in Lightroom. And sometimes it's difficult to figure out exactly which one of those images is the best one. Which one of those do you want to actually start editing? And this is where the, the survey mode really comes in handy. So here's a, a photograph right here of a, a waterfall in Yosemite. And I took the same ver the same pretty much composition over and over again, just varying different uh, shutter speeds. So if I just go back to my library and I actually highlight all the ones that I want to take a look at. So obviously these are all the same. And I hit the shortcut key N to pull up the survey mode. It shows you all of them in a very nicely laid out um, kind of palette to work off of. And then you can kind of start to deselect these. So if I look at this one right here, I know that that one is uh, too long of a shutter speed. I want to deselect that. So I can come down to the bottom right hand corner and just hit X and deselect that one. If I want to deselect this one, get rid of that one. And you can just ultimately just whittle it down to exactly which one of the photographs that you want to go ahead and begin your edit. I use that one all the time as well. Now the next one is the uh, the develop module and the library grid, which is the shortcut key D to pull up the develop module and the shortcut key G to pull up the library grid. These are two things that I think are used probably the most. I mean, you, whenever you're in Lightroom, you're bouncing back and forth from the library to the develop module constantly. And by using these shortcut keys, it'll definitely kind of speed up your process a little bit more. So I have this image right here highlighted, and if I hit D, that'll take me directly into the develop module. And if I'm done editing this photograph and I wanna go back to the library grid, I just hit the shortcut key G, and that's gonna take me right back there. Now the next one is the lights out or the uh, the full screen view. Now this is really handy once you've kind of finished it, once you're getting close to an end of an edit and you wanna get rid of all the distractions on your screen just so you can look at the photograph to, to, to kind of see if you like the way or like the direction that your edit is going. So if you're in the develop module, let me hit D to take me to the develop module right here. And if I hit L, that's gonna be lights out. And if you hit it again, as you can see like along the side here, you can still see a little bit of the background. If you hit L one more time, that will completely black out the area. And if you hit L again, that'll bring you back. Or you can hit F 
and that will take you to the view full screen mode. And if you want to get out of that, you can hit that as well or hit F again, and that'll take you out. So I find that's another great way to just kind of remove distractions and just kind of figure out exactly if the way you have an image or the direction you're taking your edit is what you're ultimately looking for. Now the, I believe this is the ninth one. It's the the crop, and I'm not sure exactly what it's called, the, the crop switch, but it's a shortcut key X. I'll show you right here. So if I want to crop this image, I'm going to come up here to the crop tool. And let's say, let me go up here and let's hit the shortcut key O to get back to the rule of thirds crop grid overlay. And let's say I want to put a four by five crop on this photograph. So this photograph is shot in the landscape orientation. And I'm going to come up here and say four by five. Well, that put the four by five crop also in the landscape orientation. But if you want to flip that real quick, you can just hit the shortcut key X and that'll take the four by five crop and put it in a portrait orientation. And if you don't like it, you can hit X again and it'll take it back and keep hitting X until you find exactly the way that you want to crop your photograph. And then you can just close it out and then you are good. So those are the nine uh, shortcuts. Now that 10th bonus one that, uh, that the setting is, um, I have no idea what it's called. I actually, I think it's called solo mode and here it is. So how many times have you been in a situation where you have all these different types of, uh, yeah, you know, all the basic panels open for me, some people, they don't care. They'll leave them all open. But for me, I have to close every single one of these constantly. It drives me crazy. But if you right click on any of these, you'll see something called solo mode. If you select solo mode, what that'll do is every time you open up one of these panels, it'll close the other one. So if I open up split toning and I come down here to transform, it's gonna close split toning and open transform. If I wanna go back to the basic panel, it'll open basic panel, but it also uh, close the transform. So that's the solo mode. I, I wish I would have known about that one years ago. That's a really cool one. And I, I never hear many people talking about that one. So I think that's a pretty cool one as well. So those are the nine single key shortcuts that I use in Lightroom every single day. I hope you didn't know any or any of them. I hope you didn't know all of them and you were able to pick up a couple that you can apply to your post-processing workflow moving forward. So if you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up, definitely appreciate it. It helps out the channel and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I'll see you next week. Bye.